Your dick fucked up, does your life suck shit? Is your wife about to leave you cause you're annoying? Sounds like you've got a lot of fucking problems. Don't you sweat cause Stavi's gonna solve them. He's pretty fucking dumb but he can figure out your problems. Here is an example, you should always use a condom. No. Yeah, I just, I guess, I guess I think, I guess maybe you don't always have to is my point. Like maybe there's some situations where you don't have to use a condom, you know. But um, you know, you know what? Let's just go ahead and why don't we just finish the song? How about that? Show's about to start. It's called Stabby Solves Your Problem. Mm, what a fucking jam! All right, <clears throat> hit me, hit me with the fucking first call, baby. Stop. This is Carl from Bowling Green. Uh, so last weekend, I brought home a chick from the bar. And when I woke up, she was gone, but my bed was all wet. <laughs> Man, not only did she pee in my bed, but then she went to my roommate's empty bed, and she peed in his bed. Uh, luckily, he was gone for the weekend, so it's not like, you know, they did the deed. She just marked her territory in my bed, went to his bed, marked her territory there, and then left. So Stav, uh, what should I do, man? Should I uh, try oh. calling this girl again and, and boning her again? Or <laughs> do, do we have a case of a uh, serial bedwetter on our hands? Uh, fuck this motherfucker. Uh, fuck the Doberman. <laughs> this motherfucker fucked the Doberman in heat. Bro, I love how this man's question ended with, should I call her again? Yeah, so I fucked this girl, and I, was, but I, w I wasn't away. Well, by the time I woke up, she was gone. But there was a trail of diarrhea from my bed to the kitchen and uh, throughout the entire utility closet. She got diarrhea all over the hot water heater. Uh, but the pussy was 6 out of 10, so I'm wondering, you think I should make her my girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Pissed your roommate's bed. <laughs> uh, like fucking uh, Goldilocks. <laughs> this bitch is Goldilocks with a UTI <laughs> with a fucking bladder issue. <laughs> Um, look, bro, <laughs> how hard up are you for getting your dick sucked? I mean, to me, what, if this isn't a deal breaker, what's a deal breaker for you, brother? <laughs> your bed, your bed, she, you're drunk, she pisses herself, it's embarrassing, but Maybe she could feel you. Maybe she was like, you know what? This guy, I just don't. Maybe this is her way of, of making sure no one ever hits her up again. She's like, you know what? It was a good one night stand, but I'm afraid this guy, I got clingy vibes. So I'm just going to piss in every bed I find in his apartment just so he doesn't call me back again. <laughs> Which I have to admit, if you're a hot girl that desperately fucks some guy at a bar and you don't want him calling you up, because let's be honest, that, that happens. We've all, we've all lucked out at last call. Where a woman who's drunk enough with low enough self-esteem finds your little fucking chubby, average-looking ass and sucks you off for the night and then realizes, ugh, this fucking, this no-pussy-getting motherfucker's gonna be blowing up my fucking phone for the next fucking two months. I better do something. I better piss every bed in his house. <laughs> that would have worked for me, honestly. If she pissed in my bed and my roommate's bed, that would I would not have called her back. Even when I wasn't really getting that much pussy back in the back in the early days. So maybe she's trying to send you a message, but look, bro, if you want to call her back, I'm not gonna stop you. <laughs> this is your decision. <laughs> oh fuck. I love her. Hey, Stop, it's Spencer again. Oh, uh did Spence. let her lick my toes. It was 
You know what? I got to say, I was into it. I, I, you know what? I had to hang up, and then I let her do it. And my God, you know what? You're right. I listened to you what you said. She licked my toes. Didn't work out in the end. She went back to her ex, and then she tried to do a whole OnlyFans thing with an wow. open relationship. I don't know what the fuck is going on there. Right. But end of the story, I let her lick my toes. So thank you again. This is Spencer from South Carolina. Once again, you need to come on down and have a show in the deep south, my friend. All right. <laughs> Hell yeah, Spencer, you beautiful motherfucker. For those of you who weren't listening last week or last month, I guess, Spencer, our fucking beautiful South Carolinian over here, he was uh, caught up. He had a he was dating a young lady and sh- she wanted to suck his toes. He didn't want to do it. I admonished him for his closed mindedness. And you know what? Spence, it didn't work out. She went back to her ex. She's got some issues to figure out. Whatever, whatever. But you opened up your fucking horizons. All right? And that's what's important. And I can't wait to know what kind of fucked up, weird sex shit you get into next. And please call in, Spence. Please keep us fucking... Please keep us fucking posted. And uh, you know what? Just for that, I really... I actually do want to go to South Carolina because I like... I have some friends over there and I like Charleston. It's a nice city. So who knows, baby? Maybe you'll see me. Um, all right. Beautiful. Shouts out to fucking Spencer. This one's a callback from the person who you thought was a robo voice at first and then turned out not to be. Yes. Yes. They were really, they rambled like a motherfucker if I remember correctly. They called back twice and one was three minutes and then this one was only like one minute. So I'm playing this one. Let's do it. Uh, Bones again. Um, by the way, I am single now. Uh-oh. Um, I've also dropped uh, 20 more pounds. Hey, so, there you go. Um, heck yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Sorry for threatening to end your life that one time. <laughs> you know, I didn't mean it. It was just kind of went cuckoo. <laughs> How anyway, am I? <laughs> um, I, I do think you're funny as shit. I do think you're awesome. I think you're a great guy. A good, excellent actor. I've, wow. I've watched all these, all of your uh, shorts Thank that you, you starred so in. Good work, honestly. Um, don't know what else to say, but uh, I'm single. Uh, if any, uh, I don't even know if I should do that. Probably not. Anyway, <laughs> you're great. Fuck off. How am I in an abusive relationship with this woman and we've never actually talked on the phone directly? <laughs> I'm sorry I, ended, I threatened to end your life, but you're great and I love you so much. And if you just stop making me so mad, I wouldn't have to raise my fist up against you, honey. <laughs> um, well, thank you for the kind words. Uh I think some people in this chat are kind of into this, you know? I don't know if it's going to work out between us. I don't remember where you live. Uh, But I will say, I think within this chat, seems like some people here are turned on by your version of toxic femininity. Um, So something, you know, hop in the chats, baby girl. You know what I'm saying? We'd love to have you here live. Uh, But thank you. All right, we got two more calls from satisfied customers before Ooh, we go into the it. main problems. I love it. Savvy, baby. Uh, this is not a question. This is a thank you, a, a deep, heartfelt thank you from your boy Tom in uh, Iowa. Uh, you always preach open, honest communication. Uh, and And recently... That shit has worked. That's good <laughs> advice. You're a motherfucking G, dude. <laughs> fucking keep it real. My keep boy. Keep it 100. Uh, 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 fuck Albanians. Peace. <laughs> my beautiful Iowan, Iowan motherfucking Tom. I love this, man. That's what I like to hear. This is, this is warming my little fucking heart. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping everybody's being open and honest and getting their little balls sucked out there. This is Jim. Uh, I want my wife to fill my ass up, like with a toy or something. And uh, I asked her while she was jacking me off, and uh, she said yes, Ooh. but not an enthusiastic yes. Uh huh. So I'm not sure how to approach it. Yeah. Uh, should I order some toys, have them delivered, and then pull them out? Or should I ask her again in a, you know, more calm environment where I'm not horny out of my mind? Right, right. Uh, 
So yeah, that's my problem. Uh, and one complicating thing, yeah, I think we kind of been kind of playing playing coy about getting my ass played with for a while, mm. and then like he would make a joke of it, and then I'd always say no. But now I want it. Been jacking right. off porn about it. So right, right. Uh, at some point, I think we were playing coy about it, and she said, "Oh, I don't want to stick my finger up there, but." You know, if you want that, you're going to have to go and get a toy. But the thing is, I can't remember if that's real or if I was just super tired and that's like a dream. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, tell me how to get my ass plugged the fuck up. Thanks, Dov. Bye. I, don't, I can't tell if it was real or if I was dreaming of my wife fucking me in the ass. <laughs> if that's a dream, that's a fucking tough dream, bro. You're dreaming of your wife not wanting to do the minimum of your sexual fantasy? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Have some self-esteem. You want to get your ass filled up by your wife. All right? Look yourself in the mirror and you say, I want my whole stuffed up. I had, There's a woman I love who I am in, I'm engaged in holy matrimony with and until death do us part. And by the way, bitch, that includes... Throwing some fucking silicone up my ass pipe. That's what you're going to do when you look in the fucking mirror. I don't want you fucking sitting here being like, oh, geez, maybe she, w she would say it, but maybe if she'll put her pinky, but maybe I, I was having a bad dream when I thought that. <laughs> Come on, dude. You want to get your ass stuffed, all right? So that's step one, is admitting you have, in this case, not a problem, but a horny desire. It's the same as alcoholism. Step one is admitting that and being fucking proud of yourself about it, all right? You're beating off the porn. Clearly, there's some fuck. You've built up some tension. Now, what the hell is up with this lady? She won't put a fucking finger up her husband's ass? What the hell kind of fucking prude is this? This is fucking wild. So, yeah, clearly, maybe you have made things more complicated than they need to be because of how coy you've been about this. And you were probably hoping you don't seem like, listen, I'm going to be, I'm going to level with you. You don't seem like a take charge guy. All right. You seem, it seems to me, and look, we've all been there before, right? You usually it's in the reverse. Usually it's a man. It's in the reverse where you don't want to push the woman too hard. In my experience, you'll float out. Hey, what about a finger up the butt? Thinking, does she like it? And what you're hoping for is like, oh, hell yeah, let's fucking do it. Next thing you know, you're butt fucking, right? That's what you're hoping for. So you're hoping you'll throw something out there and you won't have to forcefully, assertively ask for it. You'll throw it out there and she'll meet you more than halfway, right? But clearly, that's out the window, okay? She's not coming halfway. She's not even coming three quarters of the way to you, all right? She won't even give you a, a fucking, she won't even jack you off and say, yes, yeah, I'd love to, just to get you to come. She's being like, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I'll put some, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'll put something up your ass. You don't want that from your wife, okay? So, I mean, the fact that she won't put a finger up your ass, is it, how long have you been married? Is it too late for an annulment? <laughs> Can you, go, <laughs> can you go to the priest and say your fucking highness or whatever the fuck, your excellency, what the fuck do you say to a priest? Father, father, my fucking bitch won't plug my shit tube up. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck I thought I, I this is a different person than who I married. Um, <laughs> I've made a huge mistake, father. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I haven't gotten my ass fucked by my wife. Look, bro, you're going to have to take a leap. Now, okay, we've goofed on this situation. It's pretty funny, and you do need to believe in yourself in every aspect. This is a fucking guy that has not gotten a raise in four or five years, if I had to guess. This is the kind of guy Jeff Bezos dreams of. <laughs> This is the kind of guy that'll work a fucking 13 hour shift and piss in a bottle just so nobody yells at him. Um, but <clears throat> here's what I'm saying to you. All right. Uh, you got a couple options. You want to take the more forceful route 
Now, this is interesting because you're trying to be, you're trying to be acted upon, right? Um, so you can, you, your two options are advance it to the next level, all right? First of all, clean that hole up. Get it looking fucking spit shine, that motherfucker. Ew, 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 ew. Ding. You know what I mean? Make it have that little fucking, you know, that little triangle, like that little fucking in cartoons where you can, where the reflection goes off. You're going to need to get your ass pipe clean as hell. All right? You're going to need to get that hole blasted out. Go to the spa, get a bidet, get a fucking enema, whatever it is. Because if she's not wanting to put her finger in your ass, to me... That says she doesn't want shit on her fingers. Have you ever fucked her in the ass? We got That's another interesting question. Is she open to butt stuff in general? Are you the only one in the relationship getting fucked in the ass? Because maybe this is a power dynamic thing as far as she's concerned. If, she, if you're not willing to put a finger up her ass, why should she be willing to put a finger up yours? But she might just not be into this at all. So, your options are just buy a sex toy or... I think your instincts were correct. Be less horny. Bring this up. That can work as well. After you've both nutted, maybe it's not even a fuck sesh. Maybe it's not even an active fuck sesh. Maybe you just find a good time to bring it up. Um, you know, may, you're just fucking watching TV. Maybe you're even like making out a little bit. But, you know, whatever. whatever you feel out the vibes. Um, but it should be post-nut. Not direct, not when you're horny out of your mind. You need post not clarity or you need just, you know, maybe you beat off. Go watch a fucking, go watch a video where a lady's got a fucking dildo up a fucking little sluts, little male sluts ass. Fucking clean out your fucking balls with one of those and then approach her about it. But you want to be of sound mind and you want to say, hey, I'm into this. What do you think? You want, uh, listen, I'll get my ass, I'll get my asshole cleaner, cleaner than it's ever been. Cleaner than it was when I was a newborn baby. If you're willing to fucking stick a pinky up there. Or maybe you have to get the toy. But you're either going to have to just move forward with the toy and bring it in the mix. One way to go. Or what I would actually suggest, which would be better for you, since you clearly have a problem being direct. Have a direct conversation. Hey, look, I'm really into this. I really want to try this. How can we make it? Is this something you're interested in? How can we make you comfortable? You said you didn't want to put your finger up my ass. Was I dreaming that? <laughs> God damn. Uh, it's so funny because you're with your personality, your wife should have known you wanted to get your ass fucked. <laughs> you're the most bottom a straight man could possibly be. <laughs> but that's my advice to you, my friend. You're going to need it. You're going to need to be direct. You're going to be need direct because just buying a toy and then kind of throwing it out there and hoping she fucking gravitates towards it, that's just an extension of of uh, what you've been doing that hasn't worked. So you're going to have to be direct, and it's going to be good for you. It'll be good for you personality-wise, and it'll be good for your asshole because it'll get fucking stuffed finally. Oh, I should say before I start this, this is a uh, two-parter. Two-parter. Let's do it. Hey, Savi. Uh, quick question. <laughs> So I don't know what's been happening. Uh, the past few times I've had sex with my wife, uh, I've only been able to come once. And it's usually like seven minutes in if I'm lucky. And then we go for like another 45 minutes and I, I just, I can't do it again. Uh, like I stay hard, I just don't come. She does, so she's happy. And I guess that makes me happy. But uh, you know, I, I like to, I like to get another little nut off. Thanks, Bobby. Okay, I'm waiting for the two-parter. I'll reserve judgment until uh, then. One more thing. I just called about uh, me only coming once and <laughs> not being able to do it again that night. Uh, we have tried other things, like uh, should I chop a pinky at my ass? Respect. Uh, yeah, I, think I wasn't really into that. Uh, we tried she... a bunch of different things. Maybe I just need pills. But uh, I'm 24, and I don't really want to do that. Thanks, Bobby. Love you, baby. Love you, too. Wow, wife, 24. Good for you. And you know what? I applaud this couple. You hear that? The guy before? You hear that? The guy who's struggling to get his wife to put something up his ass? Um, all right. So look, your situation here is you busted once. And then your dick stays hard. 
but you don't bust again. <sighs> Pow, I don't know what to tell you. Here's what I would say. Jeez. It's, is this really that? I mean, I know you'd like to get it one more. Have you tried just beating off in her presence? Have you tried beating off on into her mouth or on her face? Have you tried beating off while getting your nuts sucked or your ass eaten? I know you said you got a pinky up your ass, but maybe you need a little more stimulation. Getting your nipple sucked. If you're open-minded, go the whole way. Um, but if you've already nutted once... You're just gonna, you're kind of just the flip side of what it's like to be a girl. You know what I mean? Now you know what it's like. Cause I feel like a lot of times girls, look, I know particularly my, my move used to be I've opened up the sexual repertoire. I would in my youth eat pussy till she busted. And then I was like, great, time to get my little prick in there. And now I'm about to, and I'm gonna bust in min moments. <laughs> And we're basically even. Um, so, look. You just got the flip side. You did not get a nut off at all. Are you on any kind of medication or anything like that? I just think you need to keep exploring sexually. And also give it some time, maybe. You know what I mean? Think of it as like, you're, you might need, your dick might need a hard reset. You might, you might, you might just be good for one nut on one erection. So you might want to fuck, get your nut off, stay hard. She gets her nut off. Then you chill out, watch a movie, hang out, whatever. Fuck in a couple hours. Maybe your dick is reset. Personally, one of my favorite ways to spend the day, honestly, is I'm hanging out with somebody. We fuck r off the rip, right? Just we get a nice fuck sashino in, get a couple nuts off. Really, really give it the, our best effort. As soon as we get there, we're, we're well rested. You know what I mean? Then we do an activity. All right? We do an activity. Maybe watch a movie. Have some dinner. And then we have a second not as vigorous fuck sesh. I think you might just need a little more time in between. And you're a young guy. You said you're married. I don't know how much fucking and sucking you've done in your life with other women. But you and your wife are clearly open to experimentation. So that would be my advice to you. Get two separate, get two separate nuts off. Get two separate. You're going to, maybe you're just a one erection to nut, one to one ratio. I know I am. And let me tell you something. My dick does not stay hard after that one. I bust it off. We go soft pretty close to instantly after that. Maybe I can have a couple, you know, theatrical pumps. Maybe have a couple pretend I'm still not, I didn't bust. Extend, extend. Mentally, what, how long the fuck sesh is by 45 seconds. Maybe I can do that as the power is draining from my dick. I get a couple three-quarters hard pumps in. But, you know, you might. this might just be youth and being in love. In fact, you might want to... You're seeing this as a negative. This might be... You're so young and, 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 and vi virile and you love your wife so much that your dick stays hard against all odds. All right? In fact... The fact that your dick stays hard 45 minutes post-nut, that means you love your wife 45 minutes longer and more than most men love any, the person they're fucking. You should see that as, that's actually a testament to the bond you two share. And I would be happy about that. And I, I would just see that, I would let your relatives know and I would put that, I would let everybody know that that's how strong it is. That you're like, yeah, mom, by the way, I know she's the one. My cock, stiff as a fucking board, a full you can watch two episodes of 30 rock after i bust i'm still inside i'm still inside my wife hard hard as the day is long okay so it's a beautiful thing and pills are not going to help you by the way in fact sometimes as a as an avid dick pill aficionado myself i can tell you they don't help you come faster they just make your dick harder in fact it sounds like you have kind of a natural dick pill between the combination of youth and love you basically have what a dick pill penis is, speaking as an expert. Um, so that's my advice to you, my friend. Keep up the sexual experimentation and uh, give your penis a little rest before you want to get nut number numero deuce on. And you know what? 
if your wife is so into uh, experimentation, maybe she needs to step up her dick sucking game. <laughs> Let her take some cock sucking courses. I remember the movie Old School where Andy Dick comes in to show the girls how to suck cock. Sign her up for one of those. Maybe there's a master class on that. Something to think about. <clears throat> and I, the chat is over here saying, I'm saying his wife has trash top. I'm not saying that necessarily. I'm merely, I'm a good fucking doctor, a good mechanic, looks at the problem from all angles. It, it seems like his wife is a very willing sexual participant. She's out here ruining her manicure, putting her fucking pinky up his little fucking tight ass. All right. She's trying her best. I'm saying let's open it up wider. Face fuck maybe. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes a nice face fuck, that ain't too shabby, pal. All right? A lot of things to think about. Have her sit on your face and beat off. I like that move. As someone with a fucked up foreskin, certainly I have trouble getting my nut off. So I have tried a lot of different stuff. And uh, a lot of it sometimes comes down to beating off. It's sort of like assisted beating off. Getting your nuts sucked. Getting your fucking, you know, sucking titties. Getting your neck kissed. Getting your ass eaten. Eating pussy while beating off. Eating ass while beating off. Watching her beat off while you beat off. Having her beg you to come in her mouth while you beat off. A lot of different options that I've explored in a lot of different ways. You just got to keep opening up the fucking the, the repertoire. Nip sucked? I haven't yet, but you know, I'm, I'm open to it. <clears throat> and by the way, if you're a dick pill company or a tablet company, th I would be remiss not to remind you that this program does not have any sponsorships. And uh, though I may, though I may on a separate program have a long-standing promotional relationship, here at Stavi Solves Your Problems, we are open for business. If you sell a cock pill, there's a lot you could do a lot worse than this show. We got a lot of motherfuckers that don't know how to get pussy, that are fucking scared to get pussy. Some of them are too hard, but most of them aren't hard enough. So, something to consider. All right. Thank you, though, for your question, my friend. And uh, you know what, Ralph? Let's, let's fucking mark that. I would like to talk to that guy. I think that's, that's a potential call live because I'd like to hear the kind of shit they're into. Hey, uh, um, so, my question is... <clears throat> Um, essentially, uh, my girlfriend is just garbo at giving head, uh, <laughs> it's a little toothy, uh, she uses, like, her tongue and, like, pushes it in the back of her mouth so it doesn't, she can't go down that far, uh, it's just, it's no good, and, uh, there's been a couple times, and, um, I just went soft, which is obviously no good. Sure. Um, I know if the shoe were on the other foot, I wouldn't want to hear that, like, uh, absolutely trash at that, so... How do I kind of address that? Because she still wants to do the tongue shield thing, uh, kind of small mouth. Uh, yeah, let me know. Very delicate situation you find yourself in. <clears throat> because, you know, I have found personally it's a skill that I have not been able to I guess what I'm saying is either you got it or you don't at the end of the day. And sometimes it's not even about... Most of the time, I'll be honest with you, it's about heart. Sucking dick is about your intangibles. And eating pussy, too. It's about wanting to. Really, in your heart, wanting to. Do a good job. Um, I don't know how to give somebody a pointer because, look, fundamentally, it's a dick and a mouth. Some women just have this incredible... I've, I've come across some incredible techniques. I've seen some... So, you know, the prick has gotten... There's like a, a rhythm. I've gotten a perfect rhythm where it's like... It's almost mathematically you're going to bust soon. Um, a technique where it almost feels like... The girl's sucking your dick and then she takes her mouth off for a second and then like a fucking... Air, she's formed an air vortex. And then the air is sucking your dick while she gets a breather. It's fuck... It's... The engineering is unbelievable. It's beautiful, efficient. It's a simple machine. Um, you know, I was, I've at times b blamed myself because I have a fucked up foreskin. And I'm like, oh, you know, 
it's not their fault. And then you come across a girl that has some kind of different put it's almost like a layer of some kind of perfect goo and slime over your penis and it just good god and uh you know and then you combine that with a, a verve and a desire to do a good job and i hate to say it there's only so much that that can that can be done here um hmm well, uh, you could try, like I said, you could try a face. <laughs> Is she hydrated? Let's start there. Does she drink enough water? Is she producing enough saliva? Um, do you have any friends that are girls? I would really like to ask a girl this because I don't know how to approach this because I've had women ask me, can you give me some pointers whatever, or like tell me what you want or whatever. And it's like... It's kind of easy when it comes to eating pussy because it's like I've gotten some very specific instructions. Like just put your fucking finger here and just mash my clit in this specific rhythm. And in what feels like 42 seconds flat, pop, they're fucking convulsing. Or other women are more of a finger pop an internal situation where you got to really fucking put some elbow grease in there. And some are a combination. But when it, again, when it comes to sucking dick... It's basically a dick in a mouth. And there's some personal artistry that you have to bring to the table. Because I can't really tell you what to do better than that. Other than open your mouth wider, I guess. You're going to have to start sucking cock. <laughs> You're going to have to start sucking cock to give her fucking... To give her some pointers. To understand. But do you fundamentally think she wants to? Because I, I got to tell you, at the end of the day, it really comes down to heart and effort. And uh, if you're starting at this place, it's a tough it's a tough zone to be in. I have had to talk. <laughs> I've dated girls in the past where they don't really like it. And I've had to be like, look, certain things in a relationship are very important to me. We are not about to become a couple that goes straight to penetrative sex. I'm going to be eating pussy. I like to. And I need my dick sucked. And you know what? That was that was well received. But it's up to her. You're going to have to put the ball in her court. And uh, you're going to just have to sit her down and be like, this is important to me. And if you care about me, you'll learn how to fucking do some tricks with that mouth. But, you know, get a, get your ball sucked. Get a lick. But you're going to have to let her know, bro. We, we got to do something about this. And, uh, you know, you can throw your own suggestions out there, but ultimately it comes back to her. And it's about wanting it more. Sucking dick is basically like every, every metaphor you've heard about, like a white basketball player or football player, like gritty, wants it more. A grinder. It applies to sucking dick. You got to want it, baby. You got to want to fucking slurp that cum up. Whereas a lot of girls like to just... Mm. It's a Chris Rock joke. Is it in yet? Uh, nah, nah, nah. Is it hard? Put it in. That one. Sorry. This might be a deal breaker. <laughs> you might have to fucking break up with this woman. <laughs> Daniel from Washington. So, I have a question for your little fat ass. Okay, I don't like your tone. I was at a massage party the other day, a hot stone light. And the women, she was very unattractive and literally rubbing her pussy on the back of my head during this massage. That's awesome. Uh, like, I moved to signify, I don't want that. But the massage was so good, I want to go back. I'm also gay. So <laughs> going back, should, should I just put up with the pussy on my head? Or should I ask for an attractive male? I'm so lost with it. Okay, first of all, are you are you hanging off of a fucking off of a fucking off of the railing at a construction site? Are you dangling off of did your pants get caught off of a fucking bulldozer? What the hell is going on? 
You sound like you're trapped in a Home Depot right now. <clears throat> um, look, if she's... <laughs> when you say rubbing her pussy on your head... The massage was good. Go back. I mean, you really... You couldn't have just made this... What, what was going on? You're so fucking busy, you can't take a break. You can't wait till your lunch shift at Lowe's. You're, call, you're calling while operating a forklift in a Lowe's right now? <laughs> Also, if you're if you're gay, you would rather have an attractive pussy on the back of your neck? I don't get this. That's snobbish homosexual behavior. If the woman gave a great massage, even if she was busted and you're dealing with a little pussy heat, and by the way, maybe she's such a professional that she's not letting anything go to waste. What happens when you have a tight when you have tight shoulders or you have tight muscles? You want to apply a hot compress to it, right? Well, she doesn't want to waste her natural pussy heat. She's giving a fucking massage, and while her while her fucking fingers are doing the job, she's war she's warming up your fucking neck with the natural heat off a of fucking vagina. Honestly, dude, you're making me fucking sick right now. A, you started this off saying your little fat ass. Don't think I missed that. B, you're fucking you're calling from an active construction site, underground. It sounds like you're calling you're calling you're calling from fucking. One of Elon Musk's boring tunnel, whatever the fuck, things. You fucking piece of shit. Uh, C, you're talking about disparaging this woman's look, even though you call yourself a homosexual. And D, you're not fucking. You're not. Uh, you're not grateful for a good massage. So I would say, uh, you know, I would say go back there, okay. Get don't don't poo poo a great massage, even if it comes with a little pussy. A lot of and, and you know what I mean? A lot of people would kill to be in your fucking position. I would love because, look, I don't really want to get jacked off in a massage. I'm sort of I've, it's never happened to me. And I think there was a window in my life where I would definitely if I knew about it, have gone to some of those. But I think that time in my life is over. But look, a little pussy on my neck while I get my fucking lats loosened up. Sounds great. So, look. Maybe it's not your thing, right? Is for example, is sushi my favorite food? No. But if I go to a great sushi restaurant, I'll say, you know what, this is good. This is really I'm enjoying myself. It's not my favorite. And in the same way, pussy on your neck is not your thing. But if you're getting a great massage with a pussy on your neck, just fucking sit there and enjoy it. All right? And ask for a more attractive person. There's no way a more attractive person is gonna give as good a massage. Pussy or no pussy. In fact, a more attractive person might want might make it even more overtly sexual. They had they didn't learn massage skills. You know how busted you have to be to give a good massage at a jack off parlor. <laughs> that bitch learned how to massage out of necessity. The hot ones there didn't learn how to massage. They go straight to sucking cock. That's my advice to you, my gay friend. Hey, Stavi, big fan here. Um, so, you know, quick question for you. I, uh, up front, I am a virgin, um, but I'll also be deploying to Iraq in about two months. Oh, no. um, obviously, don't want to die a virgin. No. So how do I optimize my chances <laughs> over the next two months? Oh, thanks. Oh, man. This poor motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, he probably so grew up so poor, had to join the army, didn't get any pussy. Okay, well, <clears throat> I got to think, depending on where you're from, there's a little cachet in joining the military, right? Uh, my guess is you'll be able to parlay some sympathy. Maybe, look, look, we're desperate here. I would normally not say cash in a pity fuck, but if you, damn, if you died in Iraq in 2020 fucking one and never got pussy, that would be so tragic. If that, if that happened, then somebody, some, one of your relatives would have to fucking snipe George W. Bush. They would have to find Dick Cheney 
and shoot him shoot him with buckshot like he did his friend. <clears throat> Look, you're a fuck. You're probably a young guy. I need to know more because we got a couple things going on here. I need to know your reasons for joining the military, but I also need to know why, how old you are, why you haven't gotten pussy, and if you would consider a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? Do you have any leads? I just don't know enough, buddy. I need to know more. So we're gonna try and call you back. We're gonna we're gonna fucking reach out, and I would love to talk to you live on the fucking stream next week. All right, Savi. Um, I went on a date with this girl. Uh, we ended up having sex, fucking, nice. and not to my own horn here, but you boy. Hit the spot that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> I had this bitch go nuts. Um, not to call her bitch, she was a very nice woman. Uh, she ended up squirting all over my bed. Respect. Uh, since then, she has not called me back, which mm. seems like a weird reaction to the situation. Sure. And sure. I mean, the pussy was great, compliments to the chef. So <laughs> yep. I, I'm wondering why she would be doing this because i've been hitting her up you know i'm want to do it again see if you know maybe the glove fit for the right reason yeah uh but yeah i look forward to your answer bro thank you okay i am going to give you a devastating read on this situation um because in my experience you don't if a girl squirts, she's going to fucking squirt, right? You think you were out there hitting the pussy out the park. You thought you were fucking Otani out this bitch, hitting, hitting dingers all the way fucking 500 feet into the fucking bay or wherever the fuck. He's playing in San Francisco. It's an away game for him, and he's hitting it into the fucking Barry Bonds little fucking, you know, little ocean or whatever. Unfortunately... In my, from what I understand from the girls that I've come across and from having conversations with friends that squirt and with friends that have fucked girls that uh, squirt, if, if they squirt, they're going to squirt. It's basically like you passed, you didn't fucking, you didn't excel, right? So unfortunately, what may have been a sexual high for you was just another run of the mill getting pounded for this woman. All right? Um... Or you did do a great job. Here's the other thing. You did do a great job. You fucking knocked it out of the park. But her life, maybe she's seeing somebody else. Maybe she just likes casual sex. I'll do the flip side. I saw somebody that I had a great time with. The fucking top was unbelievable. And I've been fucking really... I mean, honestly, I'm fucking busy out here. I'm doing Stop Yourselves Your Problems. We're trying to get this tour going. I'm on the road. I'm doing these shows. I'm doing fucking, you know, four other podcasts a week between Come Town and Pod Don't Lie. I haven't had a chance. She could be busy. She could just not be interested. Or the dick, the dick that you thought was tremendo might have been just average for her. Or even if it was af amazing, she could have just be, she could just be, you know what? The dick, the dick game was nice, but I'm too busy or I found somebody else. Um... You you have to you you kind of have to take the sex how and let, okay you know what I I don't want to disparage this this is a place of positivity I want I want in your mind I want you to keep it there all right because you know what even if you don't fuck this girl I want you to replay this I want you to beat off to it I want it to be a moment of triumph but you have to take that out of consideration and you're learning a lesson that even if the dick is out of this world life is is grander than sex. And even if you were 10 out of 10, something else is happening, okay? And you have to take that out of the equation, and you just have to see, what, how am I being treated by this woman? Is she giving me the fucking soft ghost? Is she, is the time between texts getting slower and slower? Because she might just not be interested, bro, for uh, any other number of reasons outside of how nice you fucking wax that pussy hole. And if that's the case... Take the W, beat off to it, and know that it wasn't your fault. You did all you could. You worked the prick overtime. Um, and you you fucking you take that you take that experience. You got you got that little badge of honor. All right, you got to buy new sheets. 
You got to have your fucking bed, your uh, bed frame deep cleaned. And you move on with that knowledge that you have the kind of dick that can make a make a bitch go crazy. Even if she doesn't like your personality enough to call you back. <laughs> but take the sex out of it and approach the situation as if things were a normal relationship. You might have just been a little fucking a one night stand for this girl. And that's okay. Um, and you know what? She might just fucking hit you up in a, in a month or so. And maybe she just wants to fuck you here and there. And if that's okay with you, that's okay. But you have to prepare yourself for what Occam's razor here. Simple solution. If you're hitting her up, she's not hitting you back. She's just not that into you. Regardless of your fucking nice meaty cock. Still a dub. Still a dub. Okay, could have gone a lot worse. But we move forward. But let us know. Fill, fill us in. Let us know how it goes. Yo, stop. So... My issue is that my friend, oh, so, okay, I have this friend from the internet. I make music with him. I've known him for a couple of years. His uh -huh. girlfriend lives in my state. I live in Idaho. It's pretty big. Uh, I live in the north half. She lives in, the, in Boise. So she lives like eight hours away from me. But she wanted to come up, stay with me to make music. And I even talked to my friend about it. He was okay. He didn't say he had any issues with it. Uh -oh. I wasn't going to try anything funny. Wasn't? She came up here. She stayed the weekend. We made music. We had a good time. I didn't try any funny business. I didn't fuck her or anything like that. Okay, all right. And my friend is just bugging the hell out, dude. He just completely thinks that I fucked her. <laughs> he cannot be reasoned with. <laughs> wow. It's like, I know I fucking signed up for this, but it's like, dude, I thought maybe if I did the right thing, it wouldn't matter, but... I guess I'm just fucked or what? You didn't know. fuck uh, her. Thanks for helping me if you do. Thanks. Wow. His friend is his friend is like, I know Squidward fucked my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so his girlfriend came over and we shared a MIDI keyboard. And I didn't even wit take a whiff of her pussy. I didn't even get to smell it. I didn't even set up the pussy fan that I usually have in the garage where we make music. I usually put a fan right at pussy height, and any time a woman comes by, I like to get a whiff. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this guy fucking... Does he think you fucked her? You cleared it with him. You didn't fuck her. You guys don't have any, like, sexual chemistry or anything, and he's still bugging out? If that's the case, then get the... F I mean, I got to be honest with you, it's a weird move, right? Like, you know... I don't know whatever fucking... Whatever kind of fucking 100 Gex-inspired bullshit you made <laughs> with this bitch. I don't know that you guys took turns pressing a button on GarageBand. And it was worth hanging out with a guy's girlfriend, but, um, it's, so I, I would, I guess, I don't know, I guess if, like, a good friend of mine and my girlfriend, that like, were, like, I've dated comedians, I've dated actors, like, if, if a fucking good friend of mine was an actor and he collaborated with the, with the girl I was dating, I guess I would be fine with it, but I wouldn't think he fucked her, right? Like, I wouldn't. Um, look, bro, this guy just is fucking insane. If it's annoying, it's an annoying situation. This might be a callback. This might be a callback because I just don't know enough. Um, I don't know that it's a violation of bro code if he cleared it with the bro ahead of time and he didn't do anything. Although I will say your tone was like, you wanted to fuck her. Because <laughs> you're acting like some fucking big saint. You're like, I didn't even get to see her tits. What's the fucking point? I let her play my saxophone and I, I even washed it off. I'll admit, she played my saxophone and then I rubbed my penis on it. Thinking, well, maybe it's sort of like I got head, but in a, in a way that doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> Uh, 
there's something there's something in there's something weird going on here for sure um but I I don't know I don't know what you want me to do here I don't know what your question is even my inclination is to say like well if this guy's being so weird and there was nothing going on then maybe you don't need to fucking hang out with this guy but I need to know more so let's mark that for a possible callback yeah maybe your friend is just picking up on the fact that you wanted to that you've be honest have you beat off to her <laughs> that's the real test <laughs> If you ever jacked off to this woman, you something's fucked up. If you've never jacked off, you're a hundred percent in the clear. But I think I'm. A, I think I know the answer to that question. I think I know the answer to that question, and it ain't in your favor. If I had to guess, what's up, Stav? Uh, so I caught. Yeah, I caught one of my uh, best friends. Why is cheating on him with another friend of ours? Pretty handedly, pretty red handed. No. I mean, I don't have like actual evidence to show him, but I mean, I, I fucking walked in on it. Oh. The problem is, though, is that he pretty much married his first girlfriend. He's like totally in love with her. This is like the only thing he's ever done with anybody type person. And she's a total piece of shit who's controlling. So I don't know how to approach him about it. The other side of it is. She's a manipulator, so I'm afraid she's going to say that I came on to her. Right. And I don't know how to even go about, you know, no, you're right. with the other friend, but I don't know, brother. What would you do in this position, I guess? All right? <sighs> Thank you. Take care, bro. This is brutal. <laughs> this is fucking tough. I can, you, can hear, you can hear this weighing on this man's soul. All right, well, you got to say something. That's A number one. That's the fucking first. The answer is is you have to fucking say something to your friend. Um, I can totally see the situation he's in. I can feel it. I can see what you're saying where um, she's a manipulator. They've been together forever. And, uh, you know, she's, she. you could see her turning it against you. I. There's one school of thought that is just like, look, your responsibility is to say what you saw. If he wants to fucking turn it against you, that's on him. I do think you have a responsibility to say something, but <laughs> if you're worried that, that she is going to try and flip this on you, you might want to do some, you might want to fucking do some digging, get some real evidence. I don't know. Even literally hire a fucking private investigator, to be honest with you, dude, because I'm thinking what, think about what you would want if you were the guy in that position. You would want your boy to fucking tell you. You would absolutely want to be told. Proof is going to help because you need something against this type of fucking dumb bitch. Um, but who's the other friend? <whistles> Who the fuck is that guy? What a piece of shit. You got it. This guy's got to get out of this fucking marriage, dude. Or, or they have to go to counseling or something. But like more than likely, he's got to get out of this marriage. And uh, you caught them red handed. I'm, you know, this is a quick answer because it's pretty fucking cut and dry to me, honestly. You just got to say something. And you, you have to decide whether you want to go the extra mile and get some fucking real tangible proof if you think he's not going to accept it or if you think it's good enough to just say it. But it's that simple as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I don't know, man, do a stakeout. Fucking get some fuck, get a fucking tele, get a big ass lens. Might be worth it, dude. Might be worth hiring a fucking private investigator to catch her, catch her getting dicked down. Hey, Stoppy. Uh, first time, long time, all that. Uh, so I caught the COVID-19 vaccine a little while ago. And as you know, it can disrupt your sense of taste and smell. And now I'm mainly fully recovered. You know, it's been a few months. But every so often, you know, I'll smell eggs or I'll burn garlic or something, and I'll get this COVID smell back. Mm. And it's just, like, disgusting, and it makes me almost want to dry heat. And it's pretty easy to avoid it because I just uh, avoid foods that cause that smell. But this girl I've been talking to recently, her uh, her pussy smells a little bit like it. And, you know, I've been avoiding just sticking my face down there so long, but I feel bad. Just getting head, never reciprocating. 
I don't know, man. Can I just like <laughs> hold my breath or plug my nose, maybe Vaseline up in the nostrils? I don't know. I've never, never encountered this before, but thanks for your help. Love the show. I hope to hear from you soon. So good, bro. So good. Babe, I got the fu- I got fucking corona. What the f- I'm supposed to eat fucking eat pussy? I had corona. <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. No, you know what? A lot of people are going to doubt you. I've heard of this, actually. I have I had friends who they had a lingering, horrible smell and uh, that it, it smelled like rotten meat or whatever the fuck. Certain things set them off. Um, I would say one, one thing that my friend, uh, Lavender, <laughs> so I had a friend who this literally happened to. She said Lavender and... Not beeswax. Is there some? Is there some honeycomb? Lavender and honeycomb were the two things that would stop it from happening. So, what you're gonna have to do? You're gonna have to fucking go get yourself some fucking honey. Go to a fucking bee reservoir or wherever the fuck they call it. Get you some fucking honeycomb. Plug up both fucking nostrils with that shit, and uh, you know, get to fucking town. Plug the nose up with honeycomb. Have a fucking fresh lavender plant right beside you. Then when it gets too overbearing, go, ah, and then back to eating pussy. <laughs> um, now, look, here's the other thing. Maybe, just maybe, you have a superpower and her pussy's fucked up. And only you've got some kind of weird bacterial smell that because of your, maybe you're the world's worst superhero. After getting COVID. <laughs> and you can tell when a woman's pussy needs to get adjusted from the way it smells to you. She might have a cyst in there. She might have some kind of rotten pussy disease. And the only way she finds out is because you fucking brought it to her attention. Yeah, maybe you're the you're you're an STD truffle pig. You're the little hog. <laughs> You got got that's gonna real. <laughs> so your options are and you listen, you can tell her like, hey, you should explain it though, because you've been not eating pussy for a while. You should be like, look, this is fucked up and I'm sorry, but it fucks my sense of smell up and certain things do that and is it with other girls' pussies? Have you fucked since then? Is it just hers? That I'm really interested in. If it's just her pussy, something's going on there. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> hey, I know you think we were exclusive, but I've been smelling all kinds of puss, and something about yours is driving me up a fucking wall. Yeah, you got to smell another pussy <laughs> for science. Be like, babe, look, I ate another girl's pussy because a fat man on the internet told me to. He said it was the only way we would know. So anyway, good news. Her pussy stank too. <laughs> babe, I've got good news. <laughs> I smelled another girl's pussy and it smelled bad as well. <laughs> Uh, so yeah dude I'm gonna say get you some lavender get you some honeycomb and let this girl know you're not you're not a rude guy you just have an issue when it comes to COVID but you know what this is your this might just be your life for a while you're gonna have to eat through the fucking pain bro we've all eaten pussies that aren't you know listen when you come across a a great tasting pussy nothing greater Nothing finer. But every once in a while, you find a very pungent one. And you still got to get in there. 
And this is the fuck. This is the situation you might be in, and it's none of your faults. It's the COVID nineteen virus's fault. Let's blame Wuhan. Okay, let's blame the fucking China flu. No, I'm kidding. Satire. Don't get me booted off Twitch for anti anti Asian sentiments. Um. But you know. The fucking the the, the the global community's lag in addressing this pandemic is is fucking your relationship up. And look, you're one of the casualties. Some people lost their grandma. You lost your ability to eat pussy. And that's some might argue an even bigger sacrifice to make. Or to eat pussy happily. It's taken eating pussy from a thing of joy to a chore. And you know what? We all have to fucking pitch in and get back to back to normal. Uh, this one's also a two-parter. Let's do it. Hey, Stav. Uh, this is a simple question, uh, probably without a simple answer. Um, I've been dating um, my partner for a while, like four years, um, and they recently came out to me as non-binary. Okay. And honestly, I'm pretty comfortable with my heterosexuality. Like, I've, you know, I've... I've been around the block, you know, I'm, I'm, sure. a, I'm, a, I'm a seasoned guy, so I'm pretty confident in me being straight, but I'm kind of just wondering, does that make me a little gay if I'm technically dating a non-binary <laughs> person? I, I don't know. Like, um, so yeah, I still love them very much. They're, they're the love of my life. So I accept whatever they're doing Respect. in the journey, but I just, I gotta know, does that make me gay? I don't know. Yeah, dude. Because you're gay pretty now. Androgynous. Oh God, how did I not see this coming? <laughs> anyway. I uh, love you, Stavi. Hope you uh, have a good one. <laughs> Let's get the next one before I jump in on this guy. Hey, Stav. I just left a thing uh, about dating someone who's non-binary, and you know, uh, I just wanted to also leave my name. My name is Tino, or you can call me Tony. Uh, Mexican Italian, very, very cool. Um, <laughs> I can also add. That, uh, I don't know. I'm stoned. Hit me with it, Tino. That was it? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Tino. Who get? Let me ask you this. Who fucking cares? <laughs> I will say, I n ain't nothing wrong with little day them pussy, chief. All right? Let me get in there. I've gotten some wonderful day them Top and Pussadich. Never had an issue whatsoever. Didn't even consider it making me gay. <clears throat> um, I guess it depends. <laughs> I guess it depends if it's one of the days where they dress with, they got a baseball cap on and they're wearing baggy clothes. On those days, you're gay. And on the days where they wear skirts, you're straight. <laughs> <laughs> they control your sexuality depending on how they like to um, express their gender day to day. <laughs> your partner has a, a, a complete control over whether you're gay or not. <laughs> Respect. Um, yeah, dude, that's, that's what's interesting. It's like I've... Even girl, even like girls that don't identify as non-binary, it's like, yeah, whatever, dude. It's like, I fuck, I fuck to tomboy type motherfuckers. Look, you're you're in the gray zone. <clears throat> you're on you're on fucking point. You're point two percent gay, I guess. When you fucking the pussy, you're straight. When you fucking the ass, you're gay. It's them. What's so hard to understand about this? <laughs> I, you know that's an interesting I mean I'm gonna say no obviously because it just I don't know why it would make you but I, I'm, I'm open to this uh, what do you guys think in the chat is this man gay now I think this is a this is a, a topic that many people would be interested in you weren't gay until you asked <laughs> now you're gay <laughs> <laughs> people say technically you're bi I just 
I guess. Yeah, you're a fucking daywalker. You're Blade. Dude, that's a nice little fucking loophole. <laughs> some people are saying you're queer now. Oh, shit. I'm about to get some they them pussy. Put me on all the fucking queer, queer comedy shows. <laughs> they would be so pissed. Yeah, I'm getting they them pussy, so I'm queer now. Give me a fucking HBO special. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to my boy Tino. He's gay, and I'm one of them too now. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking queer. <clears throat> Respect, Tino. Keep getting that fucking they them pussy, and you are gay. But you are. Most people in your situation are not. Some people are saying you're pan. Look, we learned a lot. This is great. Hey, Savi, I'm calling up here from Toronto, Ontario. We're just getting out of lockdown, and uh, I wanted to ask a beautiful Greek man such as yourself, uh, what am I supposed to do about this summer when it comes to my male body hair? I got a lot of it in Welsh. So, any well, advice on that? What do you do to maintain your male body hair where you're going out post COVID, post quarantine, baby? Love you. Oh, body hair? Who gives a fuck? I think women like a nice furry motherfucker. Look, I gotta be honest. I, I didn't get the Greek, the fully fucking fuzzed up Greek gene. Um, I think what you need to listen as long as you got your cock reasonable. It doesn't fucking matter. I would be proud. I would be proud of who you are. But body positivity. You know what I'm saying? May hey, look, if it's wild, you want to trim it up, you can trim it up, but um you know. I think a little fucking fur ain't nobody ain't nobody fucking got a problem with that. <clears throat> trim trim your little fucking nuts though. Trim your nuts, trim your asshole. <laughs> if you're gonna get plugged up. Well, I don't know actually. If you don't do a good enough job trimming, it might feel uh, like you're kissing your dad on the cheeks. Hey, Stav, uh, long-time listener of C-Town. I've been liking this other podcast you're doing. I got a question for you. As a larger man, uh, I get a lot of swamp ass. Sure. Like, it sucks because I don't even live in a super hot area. I'm in Wisconsin. It's only in the oh. 90s. All the time, swamp Wisconsin ass. swamp ass. As a fellow larger man, how do you do? How do you deal with it? How can I deal with it? Uh, thanks for your help. Love the show. Keep on fucking, babies. Okay, this is again. I want to say these last two questions. If you sell a personal body hair trimmer, maybe you're an underwear company. I'm just saying. These are teed up for some sponsored content. Having said that. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm not going to be talking about any kind of products until they cut the check. This is a, it's an, it's an easy answer. Let's be honest. You got to fucking, you just got, personally, I'm a change guy. I'm a change of clothes all the fucking time. I travel. I'm in New York City. <clears throat> I leave my house. I got backup underwear, brother. You never know. You never fucking know. And I'm, I've been walking a lot. That fucking ups. And I think you, you stay fresh. The cousin of Swamp Ass is chafing. Um, so, I say you fucking come. You got a little gold bond on your nuts. I use some of that fucking... I have sometimes to make shit glide. I use uh, whatever they put babies when they get diaper rash. That ointment. I believe it's called A&D. I get the knockoff Walgreens brand. Um, keep your nuts fucking powdered up. Keep a fresh ch pay ch uh, fucking change of underwear. That's that's the lifestyle we're living as the plus size. Change your fucking clothes. Do your laundry often. All right. It really that's really the only solution. You gotta be you gotta be used to it. And it can be hard. As a big motherfucker, it can be hard to change in a fucking little public restroom. And I've done it before. Titties on the little my titties setting off the little air dryer thing. <laughs> Oh, but putting your balls under that doesn't feel too bad under the hand dryer. 
That's a fucking pro move. Um, yeah. <laughs> so look, keep a change of fucking clothes on you. Do your laundry often. Get high quality undergarments. And also, don't be afraid. Look, there are so there are casualties in the plus size wars. Don't be afraid if you have if you if if, an, if a pair of underwear has taken a hit. It's got that little fucking hole in it on the thigh. It's time to go, brother. All right? Treat yourself. You're better than that. You want your nuts dry. You want change of underwear. And you want high quality underwear. Do not keep that fucking underwear around for years if it's got a little hole in it. Hey, Zabby. Glad to see you're back on Twitch. Um, we've missed you. It's, it's wonderful to see your Happy beautiful face. Happy to be face. back. Um, I am a dude. And... I am trans, and I am getting my tits kneaded off of me in the month of June, and I'm very excited. Congratulations. Um, but I live with a smoker, um, and I can't have any secondhand smoke. Oh, fuck up also, your titties. Um, so your what pecs. kind of uh, weird, interesting ways can I avoid uh, secondhand smoke in my home? Uh, should I learn karate for it? And also, how do I shave my asshole? All right. Thanks so much. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So you're getting your you well. Congratulations to our friend. He got his tits lopped off. It, it was in June, so you know, call back. Let us know how it went. Um, I mean, what kind of piece of shit you're in a house, and they're like, uh, they're like, oh yeah, you just had surgery. If you come across secondhand smoke, it might fuck fuck your shit up. I'm not gonna be able to hit the patio. <laughs> Sorry, I'm smoking these fucking Marlboro 27s inside while watching Rick and Morty. I don't give a fuck. Look, I'll be you're a guy. That's cool. I ain't smoking it outside, so you can fucking forget about it. Avoiding secondhand smoke. I mean, you got. This person, you gotta... I don't know, don't you want to wrap your shit up tight? I, medically, again, not a doc. Some might, some might be surprised I don't have much medical. Can you not breathe it in or can it not come into contact with your where your tits used to be? Your new man titties. Is it, is it like a topical thing or is it like a breathing in thing? If it's a breathing in thing, walk around that motherfucker in scuba gear. You might want to wear a scuba suit, too. It might protect the wound as it heals into a nice pair of manly pecs. <clears throat> Here's what I say you do. You can't have secondhand tobacco smoke. So anytime this motherfucker starts smoking, provided DJ fake smoke is allowed for you medically, you get a fog machine and you light that fucking living room up. And you say, look, motherfucker, I'm trying to get these fucking man titties looking right. So you better put that shit out or it's going to fucking look like a, it's going to look like fucking ladies night out this bitch. All right. It's going to look like fucking club live out this motherfucker. That's what I would do. And then in terms of. Uh, in terms of uh, shaving your asshole, I got to be honest, I've never shaved my asshole. It's not something that's ever... I'm going to have to plead the fifth here. Or not the fifth, but I'm going to have to plead ignorance here. Um, maybe the chat knows how to shave your asshole. I, you know, I've only gotten finger popped a once, really, and it was... It was almost, I think I've told the story on stream, it was retaliatory. A woman didn't like that I put a finger in her ass, and then while she sucked me off, she fucking jammed one in mine. It wasn't really a sexual thing. She was doing violence to my ass. So I've never, re I've never done it myself. People are talking about Nair. You might want to get your asshole waxed. Something to think about. Did I like it? You know, I didn't dislike it. I didn't like the situation because it didn't happen in a loving way. Didn't happen in a natural sexual way. But I've said this in the past. I've got I like getting my balls sucked. And 
the taint is really the asshole is the lowest part of your balls in many ways. So I'm open to it. I've gotten my taint sort of I've got my balls licked, the taint situation in there as well. So I'm open to it for sure, but Hey Stav. This is Shane from Boise, Idaho. Um my wife has and I always had a nice big juicy pair of double D tits, <laughs> um, nice shape, nice. nice nipples. But as we get older, they're starting to, you know, age kicking in gravity a little bit. But she wants to have kids, and I'm really worried about what it's going to do to her nice uh, rack. So how, what's your advice? How do I talk to my wife about how to keep her tits just nice and juicy. The tits that I married. Just let me know. Um, oh. I don't know how you get back to me if this goes on one of your shows, but I'll be listening. <laughs> Love you, baby. Bye. It's incre- so, yeah, we want to create life, and it's going to be a miracle, but, and, and you know, genetically, the whole purpose of the human, of a human is to continue, uh, reproducing and so there's a big part of me that wants to do it but another part of me worries what's it gonna do to those fucking fat sweater puppies i like to bust all over look man you're just gonna have to fucking go with whatever whatever life brings you you know what i'm saying here's the other thing her titties while she's pregnant probably gonna get nice and big okay all right the physical body it's it's in and it's fucking, you know, slips through your fingers. It it comes and goes. All right, we are not our bodies. We're a higher being. You're a, she's a soul. Your wife is a soul that happens to have some big fat fucking tits. Okay? And look, at a certain point, those titties are going sideways. You have to make peace with that. But along the way, before they do, they're going to get even bigger while she's pregnant. And that, my friend, that's a that's the send off. That's like when a, uh, with an a, when an athlete retires, you know, like they give him the farewell tour. Kobe got gifts from everyone. They got that big farewell tour. Getting pregnant, that's the farewell tour to a nice fat rack. It's waving to everybody, you know. Wow, these are looking awesome. And you know what? Yeah, will your fucking children chew those things up? Sure, but who knows? You might like it. And let's see, how long are your balls getting? What are you looking like? Are you keeping it tight? There's really nothing you can, you, the question is, what can I say to my wife? There's nothing you can say to your wife. You have to just enjoy those breasts. One last ride. Enjoy the Tampa Bay season. If your wife's breasts are Tom Brady, this is her time. Her getting pregnant, that's her stint with Tampa Bay. Eventually, those titties are going to retire. They're going to retire from being juicy and nice. And you'll have memories and beautiful memories and you'll still get to fuck her and you'll start looking like shit and she'll start looking like shit. But enjoy, my friend. Enjoy while you got him. Hi, Sub. Hi, Ralph. Good to see you boys back at it again. It's the anthology of the Least Boy once again, baby. Woo! Uh, except uh, this time I went ahead and found love. Wow. Oh. Uh, anyway, I met this uh, wonderful she they babe who is great and sweet. And long story short, we've been dating for six months now, and she basically told me the fact that I watch porn is a problem, and is saying it's near the sexual content. So kind of a make or break for her, unbeknownst to me. Now she sends me links on how problematic the sex industry is, which I agree, but shaming me for my sexual proclivities doesn't sit right. And I don't even watch porn that frequently, maybe a couple times a week. Anyway, what do I do? I like sexual content as part of my sex life and sexual expression. <laughs> Are we just not compatible here? Relax with sexual anyway, expression. Eagles, take care. Ciao. You're not writing a fucking paper. Let's all relax. Don't talk to me like you're a lawyer because you want to beat off the fucking X videos. It's part of my sexual expression, honey. I have to watch this fucking girl that's being sex trafficked put a fucking a whole arm in her ass. I'm expressing myself. <laughs> this woman from the Ukraine thought she was coming over here to clean houses and get into community college. 
and she's sucking a man with so much Viagra in his body, his eyes are bulging out of his uh, sockets. She's sucking his cock instead. But I'm expre- it's uh, the way I express myself. <laughs> Um, okay, if she's got a problem with the sex industry, you can ask her, what if I jacked off to ethical porn? You know, they have that now. What if I went straight to the source? What if I jacked off to OnlyFans? Um, you know, supported small businesses. Um, I think that's your option, you know? Or you could fucking make a, make, make a Zuvi. Get the fuck, get a little camera out. Maybe she sucks you off. You're like, all right, well, let's beat off to ourselves. Um, but yeah, if she's got a problem with the sex industry, first and foremost, be like, all right, I'll, I'll, then maybe you should pay for your porn. But if she's saying don't jack off the porn at all, that's a different conversation. Or you could lie. <laughs> You could start this relationship on a fundamental lie that seems to bother her. Those are your fucking options. <laughs> okay, this next one is a two-parter. Cool. Hey, Styles. Hey, Ralphie. Um, I'm a high school student right now. I'm 16. I just started going out with this girl, you know, and I'm not sure if she likes me, like, Aww. at all, Aww. you know? Like, she laughs at my jokes every once in a while, and we had a nice talk, but when we hang out, it's like we're bros, you know? And it, it was it was a date. I went on a date with a girl, and it was like hanging out with my friend Bill. Okay. You know? Do you so want Bill to suck you off? How do I though? manage to act somewhat romantic Aww. when I'm uh, horrifically awkward and unromantic? Buddy. Thanks. Buddy. All right, it's a two parter, so let's wait for the second part. Hey, so this is the um, 16 year old kid asking how to be at all romantic calling back um i was right she didn't actually like me Aww. she wants to be friends quote unquote um well hey dude it's okay it's all right buddy pal that's all right dude listen you're way ahead of the fucking game already a lot of motherfuckers don't take that l at 16 okay I didn't get pussy till late in life. I was in college, okay? Uh, I did not get pussy at all in high school. I, I, saw, I saw two pairs of breasts, got my cock rubbed over the pants once, all right? But this is good for you, all right? You're starting to understand. You were clearly onto something there. I was initially, my first thing was going to say, hey, you got to make a move. You got to let her know how you feel, right? I know it's really hard. I know it's hard to do that, but... Uh, you're on the right track here. This is the age where you figure all this shit out. Um, all right. And you just got to keep, keep shooting, shoot or shoot. The, the goal, like I've said before, it's a, it's a trademark of the show. The path to a W is littered with L's. You, by taking an L, by being rejected by this woman, this girl, your age, you got closer to not getting rejected by a different girl. All right. You got closer to a little smooch, a little hand holding, something nice. All right. You put yourself out there and you got you got your little 16 year old heart stomped on. That's all right. You even said it yourself. The vibes weren't right. She felt like Bill and you don't want to fuck Bill. Right. You're not interested in a romance with Bill. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just keep on. Keep on the path you're on. Throw yourself out there. Understand the quicker, the quicker you get this out of your system, this like it feeling insurmountable um, to, you know, uh, put yourself out there, make a move on a girl, let her know how you feel romantically about her. The quicker you're over that, the, the easier life becomes, especially in terms of dating. So you're doing what you need to do. There'll be other girls. You'll ask them out. 
the vibes will be correct. You're also just feeling the vibe. You know what I'm saying? You're also understanding that. You're starting to read that. And you read it correctly in this chance. Ask another girl out. Maybe the vibes are a little better. Maybe they're not perfect. Maybe they're better. Maybe they're bad. Maybe they're worse. Maybe you really blow it. But then there's going to be another girl. And eventually you'll get the vibes right, Chief. All right? We love you. We love you. We believe in you, my friend. You will. You will succeed. Uh, in life and in getting your little prick sucked. <laughs> Hi, Stavi. Um, well, uh, I'll just cut to the chase. I'm 20, and I kind of have this habit of fucking all of my friends. Mm. And I've gone through the whole group at this point, so I ran out of friends to fuck. <laughs> so I've been segueing into dating and or having sex with older dudes. Uh huh. So I was just wondering if you had any insight on how to do that without, you know, having sex with a creep or a weirdo who wants to fuck me or, you know, doing that without getting groomed. Right, right. Thanks. Love you, Dobby. Bye. Okay. Well, look. Um, it seems like you got some issues to deal with here, baby girl. All right? You can't be fucking all your friends and then trying to go to these old motherfuckers. Um, why, why, what is it about older guys? This might be a callback, Ralph, because it's like, why all your friends and why older guys? I mean, it seems like some uh, traditional daddy issue stuff um and look maybe you need to go through a little hoe face to figure out what you want in life um that might just be it but why it's okay if you fuck all your friends and you're looking for older guys it seems like you're looking for validation using your pussy and look Eh, nothing wrong with a little bit of that every once in a while. We all want external validation from the opposite sex. But seems like you don't think you're you're worth anything other than, you know, getting fucked here. And that's not true. You have a lot to offer the world. All right? So I'm not going to tell you not to fuck older guys. And I don't know how to... I don't have insight on fucking them because I'm the... It's the reverse in my situation. I've I've definitely dated my fair share of younger women. Uh, I fucked my fair share of girls younger than me for sure. And for me, it's mostly like, look, I don't know. I'm out. I'm out at a show. I meet somebody. Whatever. I I don't know what it's gonna be like to fuck a businessman or whatever the fuck you're trying to do. Um, but you're 20. I don't know. Isn't it easier to fuck within your social? I mean, you fucked all your friends, right? So that's an issue. You might want to work on getting a group of friends who you don't fuck and then fuck around them. Um, and some people in the chat are saying you can't get groomed, you're too old. But I think you're onto something in terms of you being uh, pretty uh, uh, impressionable, right? You don't want somebody sort of like taking advantage of you. Um, you can definitely be, you know, someone can take advantage of you, whatever. So, I mean, you're a young, you know, girl. You're, you know, you're like, you're, you know, probably cute, cute kid out there. It's probably not hard for you to fuck, right? I mean, maybe just the apps. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, How to not fuck creeps. You're on tre you're in tre treacherous territory. <laughs> um, I think you got... Look, I don't want to be the guy that pushes therapy on everybody, but the kind of person that fucks all their friends and then immediately tries to jump to fucking older men, you got something going on that you might want to address. In, in the meet before you go you, before you dive pussy first into setting your tinder to 45 and up that's what i would say no judgment like i said i've probably benefited off of women with a similar bent towards to you um but 
I would deal with some of the underlying issues before I started worrying about how to fuck older guys. That's that's my that's my advice to you. Um And look, you could do it simultaneously. You could be in the hoe phase while going to therapy. But that's what I would say. Try and try and figure some of this stuff out. Try and do a little deep thinking about why you feel this way. Um I think that would be my answer. Uh, but yeah, I don't, you know, that's the problem. You're all of dating is kind of a fucking kind of a coin flip and where you're an impressionable young, young woman who wants to fuck older guys. It seems like you're the type that might get taken advantage of by some of these creeps. So I don't know. Cause the other thing is unless they're entertainers, what kind of guy is really, you know, or like sugar, the sugar daddy whole situation. You run the risk. There's a lot of creeps in that dating pool. And I would say even if they're entertainers, unless they're a wholesome guy that has a, you know, program where he tries to help his listeners. You can't really trust public figures either. You just have to kind of, I don't know. It's a coin flip. Um, hmm. I'm sorry. I don't know that that was very helpful. That's not you. Were, I think you were looking for Stavi's guide to fucking 35 and up, but I don't have it because I, you know, they're the people that fuck me. So I don't know what that's like. I would just say, try and figure out why you want to fuck your friend. You fuck everyone around you and then immediately want to go to older men. I would say deal with the underlying issue first. Anyway. Uh, I do have to wrap this show up, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to try and get this up. I don't know. Maybe Mondays. Uh, maybe Mondays will be when it releases. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it's all it's a work in progress. We're figuring all that stuff out. And uh, go to stavi.biz. Please buy tickets to see me on tour. I'm in Poughkeepsie tomorrow. I'm in uh, Norwalk, Connecticut this Saturday with Mike Racine. I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of tour dates coming up, so please come see me. I'm in fucking you know. Here we go. Let's run through them real fast. I'm in fucking uh, Union Hall, Brooklyn. That'll be my last show before the tour starts. My last time headlining in New York as a tune-up. Then we got Portland on the 18th. Then we got Seattle, uh, Salt Lake City, Denver, Minneapolis, San Antonio, Cleveland, Phoenix, Madison. Detroit, Columbus, I'm adding New Orleans here on the 12th, I think, Tampa, and then Boston, and then, of course, I have uh, Fat Tuesdays at the Stand and Pantheon at the Bell House. So, all right, folks, thank you so much. We love you. Talk to you Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>